Yeah, hello and welcome to my new English speaking channel about strategy games. I also have a German speaking channel, that's my native language, RevyGameX. Uh, I believe there's a link in my channel if you would like to watch more videos, but most of them in German. And this one is dedicated to English speaking, which means uh, I don't need to get flame from people that hate English and only understand German. I get that a lot when I make it in my other channel. But now about uh, what this video is about. Um, I've been asked a couple of times how we easily can clear cities when there's infantry in it. And it is a big problem in this game. Um, a building in this game, it doesn't matter how it looks like, like this wooden house here. It's, it's more like a bunker structure. Even so you drop a big bomb on it, it's still the, the hardcore cover, what's called here heavy cover. So even so if you destroy the whole building, it's still heavy cover. Um, I believe in the new war game, they changed that at least for the forest, when you destroy a forest, there's no cover left then. But I'm not sure about the buildings in the new war game. <clears throat> but here it's still heavy cover. Um, and also, in the mechanics, it's like the infantry can teleport in the building. So let's unload the infantry here. It only will be a simulation game, by the way. There's no real fighting involved, but I will show different um, methods to, to uh, clear cities. And the best methods and methods that don't work, even so people say it works. So if you have now an infantry in this um, city block, you see that's um, marked by the white, what's called, whatever, you know, here it's blue and here it's white, and then you see how big the block is. In this block, the different buildings, and it means everything that is um, circled by this white means it's transportable. So if I have an infantry here, it can instantly transport from one building to another building, as you see here um, in this, what's called, so this circle, what we'll call it in English. Uh, anyway, uh, you see they are jumping around. So and what will happen is, if for example I have something that can burn a flamethrower, I can uh, burn down the two houses here on the outside, and then they will just jump to another house, which means they won't get more damage. They get the impact damage from, from the burning, if I drop an apple bomb for example, but then they will jump to another building and they won't burn anymore. So the bigger the sector is they are in, the easier they can evade any flames for example. And that's a huge issue. And also, if they get uh, heavily under fire here, they can also just jump to another building or even another sector to avoid heavy fire from outside. If, let's say, he has one infantry near like 10 tanks, so they can just jump to another building here, and then there's no line of sight anymore, and the tanks cannot shoot, shoot anymore on the uh, infantry. So th this mechanic, also this one, is they can jump and transport immediately, and the other one that the building is always heavy cover, it doesn't matter uh, <coughs> if it's destroyed or not, is the reason why it's so hard to fight in a, a, um, infantry in buildings. And then on top you take an infantry that has uh, why can, yeah, yeah. It has this anti-tank weapons that's always able to destroy a tank, at least in a couple of shots, and it's so much uh, cheaper than any tank. Um, yeah, then you have the most, the biggest problem in this game. So that's why normally when people have um, a city like this city or this city, it's normally a sector and a road that's completely blocked the entire game. But there are some exceptions, and I will show you how you make one of those exceptions happen. So, first of all, um, let's start with the standard counter people believe would work. If we have here a flamethrower, this uh, salt engineers. Um, you have two different types here. One is a flamethrower, and the other one is a, um, what would you call this thing? Well, they call it a flash here, okay. So the difference is the flamethrower has 225 meter, I believe, uh, in range and can fire on the move, while well, this one has almost 200 meter more and can only fire when it's standing still. But this 200 meter more can make a huge difference, um, especially when you fight against uh, the flamethrower infantry on open field. So, but in the end they are pretty similar and um, it only depends on what kind of terrain do you fight. If, let's say, you're in the forest, then you normally with a flamethrower have an advantage because you get a surprise attack normally or surprise the enemy and you don't micromanage it, so you will fire on the move, which they have changed, by the way, in the new war game, for whatever reason. And if you have this infantry here and you don't have an attack move, you made a normal move, then it won't fire the napalm um, <coughs> flash, whatever it's called, thrower, <laughs> a rocket launcher, if they call it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, but for this instant here it works, so what you can do now here is you can go, let's say that would be an enemy infantry, you can walk on this area, the infantry will be visible, but not on 500 meter, most likely on a range when he decides to fire on you. It could be 500, but he could just disable all the weapons and wait until you're close enough to give you 
uh, a full damage because if he fights uh, fires too early and you see him then you can just remove your infantry but when you go really close and he will then enable his weapons he can finish you off and you can't retreat anymore and you don't take any well you take some damage inside the building uh, from infantry but it's so little that you normally would like to wait until infantry is really close to finish it off so but anyway um we go now to this one here he will shoot the rocket launcher on the infantry assuming it would be an enemy here and i shoot on this building for example it will burn the fire will spread a little bit but then the infantry from this building will just jump to this building to this building or behind this building here and you have won almost nothing if you have a flamethrower you can jump into the building in the sector and then they will fight close range but normally by the time you reach the sector you're dead so which means it doesn't work either so now i can show you the flamethrower here uh, shoot on a building what you need to know when shooting on a building is so that was a shot now it's burning you see it's not really a big flame and it's spreading a little bit but it's really not enough to to uh, dominate the whole sector and uh, what you need to know is you cannot fire on on a building which you have no line of sight so i believe this one would block my line of sight which means i cannot reach this building let's try well okay this infantry in the middle is the counter infantry but you see here um, depending on which side the choose, it always takes the closest. Um, I cannot fire this area here, but this one could. So which means if you want to fire indirect, you can do that by just positioning you in the right way. So now this one is burning, but again, it's really not worth while your time. Um, so that's for infantry. Then also you can use the Zippo tank, which is nothing else than a flamethrower tank. There are two versions. I believe the other version has just a less armor and costs almost five points more, less. Not sure yet, but it's always normally it's worthwhile to get this one because he can survive an um, an RPG hit. So this one has more more range, a thousand meter for his Napalm, which means his indirect fire. You can use it in a better way. So let's see. So let's say you fight a normal infantry, then you can use the indirect fire here. You also have more flames, as you can see. Uh, stop the fire. The this one, for example, has a range of 500 meter for its anti-tank weapons, and uh, while the flamethrower has a thousand meter. So, assuming it's the normal infantry, which happens a lot, then you have a chance to kill it from outside. When you see this flame actually is so much bigger and is spreading so much more that it really can work. But then again, it's not the hard counter for infantry because normally you don't know if they have this infantry. Maybe they have an uh, infantry with 2,000 and uh, 600 meter range, like a Milan 2. Or they have maybe tanks here hidden and the uh, just come behind the building and then shoot you. So I wouldn't consider this one a hard counter, but I would say this one is more viable. viable, viable? <laughs> this one can work better than the infantry can when you assault the city. So now let's see uh, what else you can do. Um, we have uh, artillery, which I also don't recommend for this kind of infantry in city building cases. But let's see, we have a rocket launcher here. Three of them. I shoot in this area just to see if I can kill some of the infantry. Okay. Let's unload all the dudes. I need a little while. There it goes. Um, the rocket launcher has been reworked in the new war game, where it makes considerably, consider, considerably, wie auch immer, um, more damage against infantry in building. Um, yeah. In this version it makes no damage as you can see. You normally need a direct hit on the building where the infantry is in right now uh, and then you make a little damage but this one was pretty clear. It was three rocket launcher and not even one dude died so I wouldn't recommend it but in the new war game it works a little better but still not recommendable even the new one. Um, and they also changed the ammunition in the new one it's um, what's called? Uh, no? Cluster bombs. But still not working. So now we have the normal artillery, we can do that too. Normal artillery can work, especially when you have corrected shot. In this case, we have corrected shot. And when you hit directly the building. So I would say it's really unlikely that you have corrected shot in a building because normally if it's an enemy infantry, it's so hidden that you can't see it at all, which means you have not a corrected shot, which means you can't target the building it's in. You can just target like two or three sectors at the same time, which means you make almost no damage. So what you see now would be maximum damage output. Uh, very unlikely this scenario and still it's like no kills whatsoever it's like one guy died and there was four of the expensive artillery four of them um, so which means it's not a hard counter at all i mean you have like 400 invested in artillery 
not considering the um, ammunition you need to spend later. So which means this one is not a counter either. So now for the counter, what I really recommend for countering <clears throat> this kind of scenario here is uh, airplanes, which is not super surprising. But in airplanes, there's also a huge difference what you can use. So for example, let's try this one here, the Hornet. Um, the Hornet has a cluster bomb. Normally a cluster bomb in real warfare is very good against infantry because you know a small cluster is enough to kill a human. But in this case, in this uh, game, it doesn't do any damage to humans. For whatever reason. I believe they have changed it too a little bit in the new war game, but not as much as I would have liked. <laughs> so we can just do this here. Cluster bomb the sector. Here again, we must uh, hit the building where the infantry is in right now. So sometimes the infantry just jumps in another building, or if I see the bomber, I see it's going to this sector, I just jump to a sector left or right. So 39 guys. There's a bomb coming. It will explode in middle air. Yeah, on a zero damage, um, I'm pretty sure we have hit at least some people. You see here the uh, bombing holes and it's in the building even so it's not in the graphic right now. Uh, and we lost like zero guys. Some people would argue now if you use the artillery or the bomber like in this way, uh, these people are panicked and stunned, whatever, shaken. And then you can attack because they are, their weapons won't fire as good as they would in a normal case. Um, that's partly true, but... Uh, what will happen if you attack right now is that the RPG gun has a 100% hit chunk still because of its range when you move with tanks in. And for the other weapons, even in panic, they will win easily any fight against infantry that is charging the building here. So it doesn't make any difference. So it makes no sense to use a bomber to stun the infantry in the building. So the next bomber that would be HE bomb. <laughs> the same poor dude. Let's see if he hit. <clears throat> it has this uh, 1000 kilogram bomb. Uh, two of them is the biggest in the game. Normally you have smaller ones, but this one's the biggest one with the most power. So let's see what damage we can do with him. Um, normally the damage here is higher if you hit the building. Yeah, much higher as you see, but it was a thousand kilogram bomb and I'm not sure if it's really viable because this one is kind of expensive, dies very fast and um, the other problem is you can only have two of them. Yeah, but it was a thousand and you see it was a much better result. So the best so far is to use this big HE bomb. So um, the main problem here is really that it's too expensive to use it in numbers. <clears throat> and if you use the smaller bombs, I don't have one of the smaller bombs in my deck right now. You have some that have like 10 bombs with 225 kilogram HE. Um, they do not as much damage as we have just seen. And it's also very lucky. If my bombs hit on the right side and the infantry is jumping on the left side right now, then I would make no damage. So this was a really lucky hit. <clears throat> Normally you can use it, but I wouldn't recommend it. And also, and still, this infantry is able to defend against a super, super big uh, force which is attacking, which means you have uh, achieved nothing right now. So um, the super hard counter, in my belief, is um, is Napalm. So you have the Phantom 2 and the Corsair 2. The Corsair is a very cheap airplane. Has Napalm. The problem with the Corsair is that it has um, punctual hitting or whatever you want to call it. So let's see, this one here has the same range like the Corsair, at least on the card, but this is actually wrong. So when you use the Corsair, it's more like you have to be almost uh, above the target, even so the number suggests otherwise. While this Phantom has eight bombs instead of two, which means it will release the bombs much sooner. It's more like, like the bombs fly long on the air. I have no clue how you call it. But the thing is, the Corsair has a high chance to get intercepted before you can drop it bombs by, by AA or by, by airplanes. While for the Phantom, well, it dies normally too, but um, it has a high chance to release its bombs normally. So, it's dropping bombs here. This one works pretty good against, as you can see, against sectors and uh, buildings, but the problem is it's easily intercepted. Well, the advantage is it costs almost nothing, 44, uh, 45 points, I cannot see it right now. So that's really the hard counter. You can move the force the infantry out. So you don't kill it immediately, but you force it out, which means you can then move in with your infantry. You place them now here. And when the flames are gone, you jump into the building. So that's really working well. But I really recommend the Phantom 2, which has more bombs. Let's drop it here. What you need to know for, for a bomber with a lot of bombs, um, whenever you click the fire position button here, uh, half of the bombs will be above the... Um, the target piece and half of them behind. So like four bombs will be here 
and four bombs will drop here. So it's always the middle you bomb. So he's releasing the bombs right now, while the other airplane would have to release them here, in my opinion. Fuck. So, in my opinion, that's a hard counter against all infantry. Also because um, this infantry now needs to go to a building that is empty. So in this case, it's only the building on the left side, which I knew before because I knew the angle from the from which I attack with the bombs. So if I would be really smart, I would bomb in a way that the infantry is forced outside any in-building sector so that my tanks can finish it. But it's really hard if it's stationed in the middle of a sector. But let's say this infantry here, if I had used my, my bombs from the right side, not from here, from here, then I could have bombed, let's say, um, this point. And then we have at Napalm going from this to here, which means the only way to go for the infantry, the viable way, would be go outside here. Or maybe in this building, which is really hard to reach because it's on the edge here. So I normally would say this infantry would have jumped outside. And then yeah, I placed my tanks here, here, like the Zippos, and they would have finished them off. Um, it's a little lucky to do that, but uh, in some cases it can work. This is a huge city, so it's really a hard case, but in other cases, the smaller cities, it's easier. Good. Um, yeah, that is just now about the countering. Countering? Countering? <laughs> oh my god. I haven't spoken English in a while for videos. I speak with my girlfriend English all the time, but it's not the same. There are less warfare terms involved. <laughs> yeah, they get veterancy for being burned. Fine. Um, yeah, so let's sum it up. Um, to clear building a city from infantry, you normally don't want to attack it in a normal way. What you want is you want to use bomber. You don't want to use artillery or zippo tanks or whatever. You normally really want to use bomber. You can use zippo tanks if you are 110% sure it's only normal infantry and not an infantry that will outrange you and shoot your zippo tanks. Or they have maybe BMP-3 here with rocket launcher and whatever. If you know that for a fact, and you can know that for a fact when you see, for example, the helicopter that will land the infantry in the early game here, or you've scouted it or fighted it before or whatever, um, then you can use a zippo as you saw on a, on a safe range and burn down the city piece by piece. That's really working, um, but the best way normally, the fastest way, or not even expensive way, is to use bombers. And I really recommend the Phantom 2 bomber. Uh, I'm not sure what's called on the uh, packed side, but they have a similar thing, certainly. They have the Yak bombers, it's more like a Corsair with Napalm, but they also have something like this one, I'm pretty sure. And they have the Buratino, which makes it so much easier. It's like Napalm from a rocket launcher, just the supply is super expensive. So, yeah, so my recommendation is use Napalm Bomber and then clear the buildings you want. Some people would suggest you use um, smoke bombs, let's see, smoke, to uh, smoke the entrance or the, the way you're coming from. So let's say I smoke this one here, normally you would uh, use a mortar for smoking because it's so much cheaper. And then you would smoke one mortar here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, this is the whole range. And then you had your tanks like in a safe area. And once the smoke is here, you would advance with your tanks. Um, that can work, but has two huge disadvantages. One is, normally the smoke won't look like this one right here. Normally there's always a piece open. Uh, so when you advance, you normally get still shot, which is really annoying. But if you do it right, it could work. But when you're close, then still this RPG will finish you off on close range. So with tanks against city still doesn't work. Because tanks, even on close range, makes not dem enough damage against infantry. Um, you can also, well, you can try with Zippos, but I wouldn't recommend it because, yeah, after the first shot, they're normally dead. So you can, but you can also try with infantry that you charge in the smoke with infantry. That actually can work, but then you need to have infantry with close combat um, weapons. So let's see. This one has static, but they're also infantry that have the CQC, close combat or something. Close combat, close combat, what, what is the third C? Close combat, city, city combat, close, no. City quick combat, ah, whatever, you know, with a CQC. <laughs> and then you can jump into the building and you will most likely win the fight. That actually can work. The problem is only that normally you need to have your infantry in a safe area here, waiting for the smoke, and then go in. And normally if I, I'm this player here, I wouldn't wait on this spot here for the infantry coming in. I would normally then use my own artillery for the smoke because I know if it goes through the smoke or will use a napalm bomber to counter it. But it's, yeah, it's doable. So, okay, uh, that is that. And one last thing we can use. Well, actually, there are two more. 
let's do this one first. What you also can do against this infantry here is you can use uh, transports. So I give you all your empty transports and this infantry is normally on, on auto fire for RPGs. You can uh, just move your transport in the range of the, of the city and it will automatically use their rockets against the transport. And as such a unit has only like eight rockets as you can see here per unit and you can actually use them to, to yeah, empty their rocket uh, ammunition. It depends on the case, how many they have here, what kind of internet they have, and how many transport you have. But in some cases, it can really work. It works especially good against uh, ATGM infantry, which normally comes with less rockets than this one here. But yeah, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> it's possible, but um, it's a bit considered cheesy because normally you wouldn't use your units for suicide attacks, and that's, you know, an empty transport that will die with a pilot in it. So I'm not sure if that's really a nice one, but it's possible. Good. Okay. So now the last one, which is really important, is if you have buildings like this one here, they're really easy to clear, which means I normally wouldn't even bother to put my infantry in such a building because this sector here has just one building, well, maybe two. I'm not sure if you can go into this one here, maybe, but you can certainly not go into the pile of wood here and here. So this one's pretty easy to, to nuke. You can even do it with a tank. I have no tank available right now here. If I had a tank, I would just use here fire position and fire on the building because it's not too much jumping in the infantry can do. I just see, I saw a jumping in this building. Okay, there are two. But if you know it's, it's a sector with only one or two buildings, you know where the infantry is and you can just uh, fire position on this one or two buildings and the infantry will die over time. I wouldn't recommend it for a big sector because it wouldn't work, but here it can work. And also, if you have this kind of sector, you can just use your, your 1000 kilogram bomb and drop it. So I want to drop it here. I'm not 100% sure if they drop it left, right or up, down. I think it's up, down, uh, which means we fly from the left side. Later in the game, it's also important to note, um, only fly from the left or the right side if you know there's no anti-air. So I can do it now, of course, no, because it's like an empty map, but uh, in a game you sometimes have to use the wrong angle just because you can't use the right angle because it's um, covered by anti-air. So now it's coming from the left side and we drop it in the middle because it should go here and here then. And then we most likely will even kill everyone. So there's a bombing. Well, it was really unlucky that they have such a spread, but the first one really hit and I believe we, we killed almost everyone in this building. And unfortunately the second one was too far away. But if you know it's working like in this range, you can actually place the first bomb uh, exactly in the middle of the two buildings. I know that for the Napalm Bomber because I don't use the Falcon normally. For the Phantom I know for sure how it works, but here I didn't know, so I placed it wrong. Yeah, but you can already see um, the result is so much better than in the big sector. And you can also use now tanks and so on. Good. Um, I'd say that is all. Oh, one last thing about this tank maybe. Uh, you have two tanks on the American side at least, uh, on the NATO side, the Avra tank and the other one, I forgot the name, it has similar cannon. Um, this has actually an, a mortar-like cannon on 2.4 kilometer range. Um, you can also use to clear buildings. Again here, you cannot shoot behind the building, but the first buildings you can. And you have a good accuracy. It's it's good to destroy single buildings when you know someone is in here. So it's like the hard counter for this kind of sector. But here you can uh, easily clear the outside. And normally the range is enough so the enemy cannot shoot back. And they have a lot of HE power, which means you normally really kill the infantry in this building. So I would not recommend it. But what you could do is you could just nuke all the outside buildings. And then you move slowly your infantry inside. So what you can do is, let's see, split targets. Uh, and then you go like with shift, Zack. I I hold down shift and just give the fire uh, attack movement here, a fire position order, and misclicked of course. What I really wanted to show is you can um, kind of cover fire or whatever it's called, suppression fire. With shift you can do it all the time. Normally I have a shortcut for it, but I don't remember my shortcut for this one. Q? Okay. So which means I can just Q it with shift. So. It looks complicated, but once you, you learn the process, you can actually do it really fast. 
which means now I can make sure that no infantry is sitting outside these buildings. Well, they could sit here, but then they will be destroyed, of course. Which means now I could use my infantry from this angle only and move forward, or my tanks move safe forward towards these buildings. I could also use it to get closer with my Zippo tanks to shoot um, between those buildings to burn the building behind it. So that would be an option, but it's really expensive, it's micro-intensive, and it's not as effective as the bombing run, in my opinion. But it's also an option. Okay, so I think I, I end the video now here. I would love to hear from your comments if you need more information about how to assault cities, or you have something to add, and always check my numbers. Sometimes I'm wrong with some stuff. You know, with ranges maybe, or some stuff that didn't work. That's why normally I use um, examples that really show that it works. <laughs> so I can be sure I'm right what I'm saying. <clears throat> but of course, I make mistakes. So if you find anything, please um, don't don't hesitate. Write it down. But most should work. But then again, it's it's the old war game now. <laughs> Almost the old, because the new one's coming out in a couple of weeks. And I already saw in the beta I played um, that a lot of stuff has changed. Not too much, actually, but a lot of stuff, especially for for um, bombing stuff, that it makes worse. Yeah, that I need a new video probably for the new war game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time. Bye bye.